Carnivorous plants. Carnivorous plants in Borneo. At least 50 species of carnivorous plants grow in the oldest rainforest on Earth. It has one of the most biologically diverse habitats in the world. Alfred Wallace and Borneo. The ancient rainforest of Borneo, inspiration for many an explorer. And I'm here to tell the story of one in particular. I'm traveling in the footsteps of one of the great forgotten heroes of natural history, Alfred Russell Wallace. This geeky Victorian collector changed our understanding of life on Earth. Along with Charles Darwin, he came up with one of the greatest scientific ideas of all time. The theory of evolution by natural selection. So it's time to leave London and head east, just as Wallace did in 1854. I'm following his groundbreaking expedition to the region which is now Singapore, Malaysia and Indonesia. But Wallace knew it as the Malay Archipelago. And I want to understand what it was that he saw and experienced here that ultimately enabled him to make his great intellectual leap. The biodiversity that Wallace witnessed has been steadily disappearing. Do you think the loss of biodiversity will affect plants and animals? Do you think it is important to protect the remaining forests? Pitcher plants in Borneo. In the Borneo jungle, ambush killers prepare for a feast. A trail of termites is hunting for food. It looks like they've hit the jackpot. A juicy plant dripping with nectar. The front runners make off with the first few bites. But they are the lucky ones. The termites have been lured to a non stop eating machine a white collared pitcher plant. One by one, they slip on its nectar and tumble into the darkness. A fatal pool of rainwater and digestive acid greets them. For the pitcher plant, it's the start of an endless bug buffet. It can eat more than 6,000 insects an hour.
I guess this one contains oh, two or three pints of liquid. It's so big that it catches not just insects, but even small rodents. And one was recorded that had in it the body of a drowned rat. So if ever there was a carnivore among plants, this is it. Toilet plants. Mount Kinabalu in Sabah is home to many Raja pitcher plants. They certainly seem to attract insects that fall into their bowls just as other pitchers do. But they also have larger visitors. A tree shrew. It's licking the underside of the lid where the pitcher secretes nectar with which it lures visitors. But even though its backside is hanging over the bowl, it doesn't seem to be in any danger of falling in and drowning. So what's going on? It leaves a clue, a dropping. So the pitcher is a tree shrew toilet. The tree shrew feeds by licking the secretions from the pitcher plant's lid, and the pitcher plant gets its fertilizer by collecting the tree shoe's droppings. Three species of pitcher plants have been confirmed as toilet plants. All toilet plants share at least three characteristics. Copious nectar that accumulates on the lid. A curved lid held at the right angle away from the orifice. A large orifice or mouth that matches the body length of a tree shrew. Why do you think this plant could be another toilet plant? All four species grow in the mountainous forests of Borneo. There are not many insects in mountainous forests. These species likely need alternative nitrogen sources. Modified pitcher geometry allows these plants to collect feces as a nitrogen source. Bat Hotels Bat Hotels. I'm Bob Hershon and this is Science Update.
Carnivorous plants live on poor soils and get some of their nutrients by trapping insects. The raffles pitcher plant of Borneo gets nitrogen and phosphorus this way. But one variety of the plant is really bad at trapping insects, capturing only a tenth the insects that other varieties do. According to ecologist Ulmar Grafa of the University of Brunei Dar es Salaam, tiny bats roost in the plants. He and his colleagues recently discovered that the plants are harvesting much of their nitrogen from bat droppings, or guano, caught inside the plant. We found a novel mutualism between a bat and a carnivorous pitcher plant, with the pitcher providing a safe roost for the bat and the bat providing nitrogen to the pitcher plant. There are over a hundred species of pitcher plants around the world, so other varieties may have evolved a similar relationship with animals as well. I'm Bob Hershon for AAAS, the Science Society.